Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today on the Sports Scouting Report with Lee Burkeen. Glad you could join us. We have a great show today. As always, we try and bring top recruits on or top guests, coaches. I really think everybody's going to love the show today. We have Brian Thomas, one of the top receivers in the country out of Walker High School in Louisiana, right outside of Baton Rouge, six foot four, 195 pounds. To me, he's Michael Clayton, part two. He's similar to Michael Clayton that played at Christian Life and LSU and the Buccaneers. And then we also have, and we're going to go ahead and get into our interview, with one of the top high school coaches in the country from Pleasant Grove High School in Texarkana, Texas, Josh Gibson, who coaches Landon Jackson, who's committed to LSU, one of the top defensive ends in the country at 6'6". 250 plus pounds, around the 4, 640. Coach is going to talk about that, but one of the top 50 players in the United States, one of the top 25 in Texas. And we're going to go ahead and talk to Coach Gibson from Pleasant Grove High School, which is one of the top high school coaches in the state of Texas. Coach Josh Gibson from Texarkana, Texas, from Pleasant Grove High School, one of the top high school programs in the state of Texas. Coach Gibson, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Coach, we talked the other day, and I want to just kind of brag on your school a little bit to introduce you, but 2019, Coach Gibson and his staff and his team won the state championship in Class 4A in Texas last year. It's their second state championship in two, in three years. They won in 2017. Um, their rival, uh, they have Gilmer High School that they play in, uh, we'll talk about Wes Orange Stark that they played in the playoffs and and also Liberty that's nearby and a bunch of the schools there, Texas High. Um, but they have one of the best defensive lines in the state of Texas. And I want to talk to Coach about Landon Jackson, who's committed to LSU, one of the top 50 recruits in the, in the country. He's a defensive end, six foot six. If I get it wrong, Coach, bear with me, but I know a month ago he was 240. You might tell me I'm wrong. You might have gained a little weight with a couple of hamburgers here and there. But um, Landon Jackson's committed to LSU. And he's also got a defensive end by the name of Marcus Burris, who's committed to Oklahoma. And Torrey Phillips, who's uh, been offered by Arkansas, from Arkansas. All three of these kids are three of the top in the top 100 in Texas, one of the best D-lines in the state. Coach, Landon Jackson committed to LSU. Was that a surprise to you as being his head coach so early? No, um, I, I don't think it was a surprise that he committed, at, you know, when he did right there, um, kind of when this whole COVID thing started in March. Um, but he, he's been recruited since his freshman year. He's taken a ton of visits. And uh, I just think he was he was ready to go into his senior year and, and enjoy it. Uh, his initial plan was he was going to take two visits um, to A&M and LSU in April and then make a decision before the summer just so he could just enjoy his summer too. Um, you know, like any national recruit, a top kid, I mean, he gets inundated probably with 20, 30 texts a day from coaches. And yeah. I, I think, I think everybody really wants to be recruited hard. And then they, they start learning as they get older, sophomore, junior year that, I mean, that's a job for them too. Um, and so I think that's why he did it. And uh, you can't argue his pick. I mean, people have said, why didn't he stay in Texas? He's a Texas kid. And uh, and I don't think he could have gone wrong. I mean, if you go to Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma, LSU, the schools that are around us, they're all storied programs. And what a blessing to be able to go to any of them. But you pick the one that's a national champ whose head coach is a D-line guy just like you, and then rattled off, you know, a record number of kids in the in the first round. Um, I don't think anybody could tell Landon he, he made a bad choice with LSU. Yeah, well, the, the last defensive end to sign with LSU from Texas was out of Houston, Daniil Hunter. And you know Daniil plays for the Vikings. And uh, Daniil's one of the top DNs in the league. Uh, he's only 24, and he's got over 60 sacks in his career. And Daniil was just one of the guys at LSU. And um, – but Daniil Hunter came out of uh, Cinco Ranch, Texas, 
and uh, Landon has, has got the same ability or more than than him. I told you, Coach, he reminds me of Jason Taylor, and you were telling me off the air when we were talking, and, and you said that was a good comparison because Jason Taylor is known for hard work. And you told me Landon Jackson, what sets him apart, you told me that his hard work is just off the, it's just off the chain. You said he's just the hardest worker you've seen. And um, What do you think of that? Because I know high school coaches, it's a dream to coach a kid that works hard. Yeah, I think I think first off, it's a dream to get to coach a kid that's a, a top ten kid in your state, um, and and when that happens, um, more than likely, most of the time they're, they're going to have some some attributes that they got from God and from their parents that they didn't have control over. I mean, I, I wish I was six 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 seven, and uh, and you can't make that thing happen. You inherit that part, and so we always have a conversation with our kids is like, what are you going to do with your gifts that you that you got from God and how, how are you going to make yourself the best you can be? Because some of this stuff you inherited and now you got to go to work and, you know, Landon really took to that. Um, and, and like I told you off the air, uh, he's not just a, one of the hardest workers I've ever been around in my life. And that's with my dad, stepdad, brother-in-law all coaching the college level. I mean, he's a freak worker, but he does it every single rep every day, and that's what makes him so special and unique um, is that he's just not a thoroughbred. He's not a prima donna. He, mm-hmm. He's a grinder. So he's got a blue-collar work ethic with with um, with an unbelievable frame. He, he was at about 242 in February, um, and now he's up to 256. He really uh, controlled his diet and uh, shed a little bit of, a baby fat and stacked on a lot of muscle. I think he did it the right way, but I mean, he's a high school kid that, you know, could potentially go in, add four pounds between now and, and, and winter break and go into LSU at 6'6", 260 and have a frame that, I mean, that it, it, it's still pretty slender. I mean, it's, yeah. he's muscled up. And, uh, yeah, I think Jason Taylor's a great comparison for Lance Jackson. Uh, we're listening to head coach Josh Gibson uh, uh, out of Texarkana, Texas, Pleasant Grove High School, which only has 750 students, coach. And, you know, I looked online. I looked at your stadium. Y'all got a beautiful stadium, by the way. Um, and that indoor that y'all trained in, we'll talk about state of mind later in the show. But uh, do y'all have an indoor or is that one of the colleges locally y'all use uh, to practice? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we're really blessed with facilities. We have a 75-yard indoor facility um, in an athletic complex that's connected to our locker rooms, training rooms, coaches' offices, and then um, a, a basketball coliseum. It's two levels, uh, you know, is connected to that too. And then our stadium's right out the back. So beautiful facilities. Um, a lot of a lot of Texas facilities are that way. You've got monstrosities that you know, at Katie and Allen and all that good stuff. But for a 4A high school, it's, a, it's really about as good as it could get at, at, at Pleasant Grove. Coach, you told me a story when Landon was younger, and you told me about him going up against Marshall High School and LSU's Chasen Hines, who's an offensive lineman. Um, and you told me, t- could you tell people that story about finding out at an early age how tough this kid was and how he didn't quit? And he was real young, what, sophomore year maybe, or even freshman year? And uh, Chase yeah, and Hines, Chase and Hines was a senior for Marshall, I believe. Yeah, so Hines was a senior, um, and Marshall had a really good football team. We went on to win state that year and, and had a great scrimmage against them. And, and in the scrimmage, uh, Landon is a freshman, so he, he's just out of junior high ball going up against not just a great football team that – Two and a half times our size of school, mm. but against the All American like like Chase Hines, and uh, it, it about I'd say in the second quarter of this scrimmage, Chase Hines uh, completely peels back on him and knocks him out. I mean, like almost cold. It landed. Landon's about still about six six at that time, maybe a half inch shorter, and he, he his feet come up in the air. His helmet hits the ground. His helmet pops off. Um, he comes out of the scrimmage for one play because you have to when your helmet comes off. And I think the coaches are holding him out. And the next thing I know, I see him running back in. <laughs> and uh, he goes back in, and I'm going, man, what the crap is he going back in for? Like, he, he might have a concussion, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I mean, he got he got mopped up. Mm-hmm. 
and he's in for that one play, and I'm about to get him out again, and he goes and sacks the quarterback, and we pull him out, and I look him in the eyes, and he is all kinds of dazed and confused, and I said, man, we're not getting a chance that it's a scrimmage. I mean, you got your head knocked off. I mean, he, he's looking whoopy. You don't even have to go through questions to know the kids are not right. But I think that play sets the tone for his whole career on the fact that I'm going up against the best in the nation, a kid that's three years older than me and um, and out of junior high, and he, he takes a lick and then goes and produces and gets a sack that, that, that next play he's in. Um, and, and, and you have to pull in and out like he – he could have had a broken arm and he would have played with that thing out there. But I think that speaks to his toughness, um, how, how athletic he is. And then he's not scared. I could see him going in to the SEC that has nothing but stallions and, mm-hmm. and guys. And he's going to take his lumps, but he, he's definitely not going to take him um, and cower down. He's going to step up and chisel himself and become better and figure out how to be successful. Coach, we're going to take a break. We're listening to Coach Josh Gibson, head coach of Pleasant Grove High School in Texarkana, Texas, one of the top schools in the state, one of the top coaches in the state. Coach, when we come back, we're going to talk about your family tree, your dad and your brother-in-law, and and talk about the state of mind. Uh, I really enjoyed watching your video, and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report with Lee King. Hello, Sports Scouting Report fans. Like what you hear? Well, you're going to love our content at LAFootballMagazine.com. This week, check out Recruit Spotlight on Landry Walker quarterback Justin Hudson, who has committed to the Tennessee State Tigers this past week. Also, make sure to check out our podcast and pre-order your North or South Magazine edition for this upcoming season. All that and more on LAFootballMagazine.com. Welcome back. You're listening to Sports Scouting Report with Lieber King. We have our guest, Josh Gibson, one of the top coaches in Texas, uh, the head coach of Pleasant Grove High School in Texarkana. Coach, you have a long line of uh, family coaching, and it's a big tree of, of coaches. Your dad, you told me, was at Plano High School for many years. It had an enrollment of over 4,000 kids, and and, and then you, uh, your brother-in-law uh, is one of the top strength coaches in the country at Memphis. You've got connections with Sam Houston State in your family with your dad. But talk about that coaching tree and how that's rubbed off on you and, and, and helped you with your career growing up around everybody that were coaches. Yeah, so, uh, you know, which I feel extremely blessed because, one, I, I wanted to be just like my dad and, and, uh, and be a coach. I took a liking to it from the time I was two, three years old. I mean, I just knew I wanted to be just like him. And when I was born, I was born in to uh, – he was coaching at Plano Senior High, which they actually have 6,000 students. That's crazy. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that was kind of in their heyday, the late 70s, early 80s. Um, I think they won three state titles during that time, and they ended up with seven. Um, but that's where he cut his teeth, and then he went on to – got a high school job at his hometown in Sherman, which was the biggest classification at that time when he was 28. And the following year, he's 29 years old. He took the job as the assistant head coach, offensive coordinator at Sam Houston State. Um, Somewhere in that tenure, uh, him and my mom went through a divorce. And it's kind of, it was kind of one of those deals. He was a workaholic. I mean, he was at the field house from six in the morning, midnight. Um, They, they, uh, they split. A couple years later, a gentleman comes in um, and takes over as athletic director at Sam Houston, so he's my stepdad. So now I know how to do it from the football side, (laughs) but then I'm learning how to do it from the business approach. And then, you know, all sports matter. Um, He wasn't just a football guy. And and so my stepdad was Dr. Robert Case. He was at Sam Houston for 20-some-odd years. Um, My my brother-in-law marries into the family when he's with the Dallas Cowboys. And then he goes on to uh, South Carolina, OU for eight years, A and M for for eight or nine, and just went with Penny Hardaway to Memphis. And so, you know, to say I was spoiled in the fact that not only did I have one great successful man to look up to and model, um, I got to see two other ways to do it. And then all the coaches that they work with. Um, as a kid who, who dreamed of being a coach, I became a coach watcher. So. I didn't just learn from them, but I learned from their assistants and the guys that worked on their staffs and felt really blessed to be able to do that. 
Um, so that, it, it shaped me a ton of how I do things today. And um, I, I have my own personality, but definitely um, learned the right way to do things from those three guys. Coach, your defensive line in 220 is incredible. And, and it could have been even better, but you had told me that Marcus Burris is going to be out for the year, got hurt. He's committed to Oklahoma, 6'5", 285, one of the top 50 recruits in the state, like Landon Jackson. And then you have Torrey Phillips, who's 6'7". You told me he's changing his body. He's about 280 now. And you said, this kid's going to be a great one, too, from Arkansas. What do you think of your D-line? It's, it's one of the best in the state of Texas. And, again, you only have 750 students in the school. This is crazy. Yeah, you know, it's one of those, I could coach 100 years and never get it again. Yeah. The fact that they're all in the same class um, yeah. at, at any school. I mean, we had 6,000 at Plano and never had three in one unit. Um, but, and we're a three-man front. So we got three guys um, with power five offers during their junior seasons last year. And at one point, somebody said we were the only school in the nation that had that. And uh, like I said, I could coach 100 more years <laughs> and it might not happen again. But the cool thing about all three of them, I mean, we talked about Landon. Um, Mar- Marcus is, I mean, is probably a good a kid as I've been around as well. Just a great person. I, I would can kind of consider him Landon's best friend. They were kind of the twin towers growing up. Marcus developed a little bit later than Landon. And then Tori moved in and um, last year, two days before football started, and she's just been a great addition to our family. And, um Love him to death. He's, he's, he's got a high, high ceiling because he's six seven. Mm-hmm. He's actually up to 295 right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, him and Marcus, and just to let you know, all three of them play basketball too. Um, Lane is probably the most dominant defender of the three, and that's why I think he's, you know, he's just like that football upside. He's nasty. I mean, he's going to throw down and, 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 and lead the league in block shots and all that. And then Tori and Marcus are – 285 and 295, and both of them have hit over 30 points in a basketball game. They're just wow. so light on the feet skill. And so I think that's going to help them at the next level. But to say we are blessed would be a huge understatement. And uh, I just really, really have enjoyed getting to coach these guys the last few years. It's been an awesome journey with them. Coach Gibson, what is your relationship with Bill Johnson, the D-line coach from LSU? What do you think he's – what do you think of him as a coach recruiting uh, Landon Jackson to LSU? Yeah, so we we started developing a relationship about a year ago, you know, when he jumped on board. Um, and, I, I, I mean, just historically, I know he, he's coached at the highest level. He's been around um, a long time, a lot of knowledge there. And uh, I know if he's coaching D-line for Coach O, He's going out to get the best because mm-hmm. D line's always going to be Coach O's baby since he played that, and obviously he's going to take care of all twenty two positions. But um, I, you know, I, I think he has a really good one. Been been fortunate to get to meet him. I guess we're only about four hours and fifteen minutes from LSU, so um, several stops were made in the winter during our playoff run, and then in January again, and they did a great job. Uh, recruiting land and I think they came in a little bit later than the Texas schools that jumped on him and were able to in my opinion get a steal you know from a kid out of state um, because of the success their programs had and then um, you know ultimately Landon loved the coaching staff a lot and they made a big impact on him. Coach Gibson we're listening to Josh Gibson head coach Pleasant Grove High School in Texarkana Texas 219 state champs Coach, uh, you won the state championship in 19, 17, 18. Y'all were in the state title game three years in a row. Man, that's tough. That's tough to do in 4A ball in Texas, three years in a row. Yeah, you know, it, it is. And, it, and we actually had two really good classes that sandwiched that deal in. Um, our senior class that just graduated, the 19 class, was super special. And then the 17 class was, too, so there were only three kids that played in the 17 game that played in the 19 game. And, and I think that's a testament to our culture. Our kids are really bought in and they're working hard. Obviously we have some dudes in this 20 class, but as, as funny as it is, uh, as loaded as that class is, we have a linebacker, Nick Martin, who's also a Texas top 100 kid 
um, they didn't win a single game in seventh grade, and they won one game in eighth grade. Mm. So for them to be able to have success, you know, later in high school, um, I think it's a testament to how much they continue to grow, and then they buy in, and, and then the classes around them um, have, have just all gelled really well together relationally. But it's been a heck of a run um, to play 48 games in the last three years and, and play in the state title. All three years has been special for our community. Coach, let me ask you this, because there's a lot of high school coaches listening in Louisiana. Um, would you look at maybe playing a Louisiana school or trying to? And I'm going to put it out there, because the high school coaches are learning about your school right now, listening to this in Louisiana. But, um, you know, especially the Shreveport area or Monroe area, Louisiana, which is closer. But it would really be good to see if we could get one of the big-time programs in Louisiana have you played any Louisiana teams in the last four years? You know, we haven't, and we were scheduled to scrimmage at Banjo last year, and like about three weeks before our scrimmage, I guess their calendar came out, and Coach had to pull, okay. uh, Coach Dawson had to pull away from the scrimmage because I think it, the date was where we could have our first scrimmage, but it was like four or five days too early for them. So okay. it didn't end up happening. Um, and then we've had a hard time finding games being in the corner of Texas. So I did. I've got a friend, Stacy Ballou, that coaches at Bird, okay. at C Bird, and uh, and we're on we're on different alignments, which is tough because where we have to get two year agreements on Texas, they start their agreements, you know, the, the following year. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still think it's something we're going to have to end up doing. We're doing it right now with. Uh, Nashville out of Arkansas, they're a really good program, and we're playing them week one. But we did. We talked to a bird, and uh, then we talked to the guys that were at the battle on the border and tried to, you know, get in on that thing. We were offered to play in it a few years ago, um, but had a little bit better of a setup with our with our opener here against a rival that we wouldn't have been able to play any other time. But for us to finish out our schedule on a yearly basis, I think we are going to have to dip into – Louisiana and Arkansas the first three weeks of the year to get games. Well, maybe this will help you. Maybe this will make a coach call you hearing this because all the coaches listen and we can, we can, we can, as they say, uh, put schools together, coach, for future games. Yeah, and and I know there's great football. Um, it, it just in the Shreveport area alone, you know, they their their news station covers us um, in detail. And actually, it's funny going back to Plano, my first job out of college was at Plano um Brad Cisak that's that's uh for NBC there he was one of their sports anchors he I we coached him in middle school oh, in, I, in, I, in the I, North yeah. Dallas area and he was he covered all of us in Shreveport with those guys so we got to rekindle a relationship with them but they do such a good job covering us and you see about 25 percent of Texas teams and about 75 percent of Louisiana so no there's great football there and and um We'll probably need to, to to join up at some point to complete some schedules for sure. It would be excited to do it. Coach, the last eight years, I forgot to tell you this, but uh, I do the the news station in Shreveport Friday night football. I actually, even though I'm four hours away in Baton Rouge, I do their high school uh, Friday night show with their sportscaster. So um, yeah, I'm okay. pretty involved with that and. My good, you know what I, you know what I get to do is I hear the breaks. They have me on the phone. I get to hear all the Texas scores, and so I've been able to hear <laughs> your scores and you know like Texas High and you know Carthage, you know all these great schools, uh, Marshall, and uh, and sometimes when I'm there, I sit in the station and get to watch all the film, and I just love that because they show, like you said, all the Texas and Arkansas teams within 30 minutes away or an hour away, which is really cool. Yeah, really. they do a great job. Coach, we're going to take a break. We've got one more segment. It won't be as long, but we were listening to Coach Josh Gibson, the head coach, uh, Pleasant Grove High School in Texarkana, Texas. We'll be right back. Parents, are you looking for advice on getting your high school athlete recruited by the right college? Lee Brakeen is your answer. Lee has been doing it for over 30 years. He knows the ropes, and more importantly, he knows the people. Lee offers turnkey service from evaluation, creating highlight tapes in the correct format, and complete guidelines for effective communication with the schools. No matter the sport, 
girl or boy, no matter what grade your child is in, let Libra Keen help match your child to the right college fit. Go to our website, LAFootballMagazine.com, and get connected today. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report with Libra Keen. Be sure to get your 2020 football preview ordered. Go to LAFootballMagazine.com. We're going to have it ready late August, early September. All 300 high schools covered. It's not like Texas where they have, I don't know, coach, a couple of thousand high schools with football. We just got a 300 schools here in Louisiana. It's crazy, huh? When it, <laughs> 300 in what? Houston, right? Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a big state. There's no doubt it's a tough job. I uh, want to get back with you. I watched a video that I welcome a lot of people to watch. Um, Texas Game Day did it. It was called State of Mind. It did a documentary on you showing your schedule during football season. And I, it reminded me of me because I get up at 5 in the morning. I go walk a couple of miles. It showed how you get up by 5. You go to the stadium, and it looks like sometimes you walk the stadium, and your coaches are in the, sta- in the office by 5.30, sometimes 5 o'clock in the morning. And you don't leave till 10, 11 o'clock at night during game season. And, and it just shows the work involved to, to get these kids ready and be there. And I just think it's a credit to, to you and your staff. I think it was a great video, by the way. Yeah, we were fortunate to have game day covering us. And, you know, they, they got us on some unique days. We start practice early on Wednesdays before schools. And then the other nights, um, Thursday and Friday, obviously, we're, we're up there extremely late, but we do, we have created balance. Um, there, there are days on Monday and Tuesday where we can get home by seven with our families and eat with them. I think that's really important, um, to grind and go full tilt and, and put everything you have into it while you're there during the day and then still be able to, to have a balanced lifestyle and have, have some fun with your family. I talked about my parents going through a divorce and when my dad was in college, I didn't miss out on time with him because I was there at the practices, but I feel like my mom did at times. And so that impacted me and uh, impacted the way we do things here. But, yeah, the documentary is just awesome because we have really good football players that we talked about, some good ones in the senior class. And for them to get coverage and and some different people for our community get pulled in, uh, I think it's a documentary. You know, they're going to be able to look back on in five and ten years and go, Man, that thing started special and ended special, and and and, uh, and we got it all on tape, so that's cool. Coach, I had to laugh about something that you said in the video. It was funny. Actually, it taught me something, and I never, I didn't hear about it. I played football. My dad was a coach. And, by the way, my mom and dad divorced while I was in high school, and I went through playing sports with my mom and dad divorcing and, and had to grow up quick, and, and my dad was traveling a lot. Um, but – you, you, you were with your players in the locker room in the video, and you said something that you learned from your dad in the old days, that if you take newspaper, the kids were complaining about their shoes, you know, getting rid of the smell, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know where I'm going with this. And you yeah, said, yeah. tell everybody about this trick. I never heard about it in football. It made me laugh, and I'm like, man, that's a good idea about taking newspaper and putting it in the shoes. Well, you know, back then, you, you're wearing shoes. Guys were wearing shoes for – two years until they wore out and now now i mean our kids have two and three pair of cleats in their locker but if you're out there in a storm and it's pouring it doesn't matter how new your shoe is once it's soaked it's soaked and it's hard to air out so we would take my dad you know would tell us he'd take wadded up newspapers and he'd bring all the newspapers up and we'd stick them in our shoes crumple them up and push them and they would absorb all that moisture out and kind of help them dry a little faster. So the next day you pull the newspaper out, they'd be soaked. And, and then at that point, they just need to air out another day. So, yeah, kids were freaking out. Their shoes were soaked and <laughs> kind of got to throw in a one of those old things that you pick up from your dad um, when you're a young boy and you watch them, and then you end up putting it into play. I could see that being learned maybe Junction City, Paul Bear Bryant at A&M maybe. Maybe that could – maybe that <laughs> – <laughs> right? Um yeah, yeah. Yep. Coach, one final question for you. Landon Jackson, who's committed to LSU, if anybody just started to listen, um, you're a big DN at Pleasant Grove High School, class of 221, 6'6", six, six, now 257. Um, what, what do you see Landon, if he reaches his full potential being his coach? 
How do you see it playing out once he arrives at LSU? You told me already, but how do you see this playing out once he gets to campus at LSU? Yeah, I really think, um, you know, as of right now, if, if the COVID-19 thing doesn't stir things up anymore, I, you know, he's going to be an early enrollee. And I think once the first day he steps on the field and they're doing a conditioning drill, that's when people are going to open their eyes and go, man, this kid's different because he, he will kill himself in a, in a 400, a 200, a change of direction, a 510, 5 drill. Um, you know, kind of your pro agility. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a running back that was going to BYU um, in the class above him, and Landon would he would beat him in the change of direction drill, the short stuff. Mm -hmm. And for a guy with as long a legs as he has, that's extremely special. But then we we have some running backs and receivers that can fly, and he'll 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 beat him in the two hundred. And I think that's where he's gonna. I think that's where he's gonna make a mark is when he's running against other linemen. They're gonna go. This guy's different, and they're all different at that level. Mm -hmm. But he's different in the fact that you can be who's going to get your shoes on and be the first one dressed in your locker. That's going to be Landon Jackson. And he comes to me with a throwback uh, mentality that's going to allow him to step on the field as a freshman just because they're going to want to reward a kid, you know, who works his butt off mm -hmm. and still able to produce with his measurables. His measurables, I mean – when he comes in at 6'6", 260, he's big enough right now. Right, as an and end. so does he have the power, does he have the strength, and does he have the work ethic? And, you know, he, he'll develop more power while he's there with their awesome strength and conditioning program. But um, he's definitely going to have the work ethic. So I'm not saying he's going to go dominate the first year in the SEC. That would be foolish to think. But he is going to go make an impact in LSU fans. They're going to know who number 40 is, and they're going to be big-time Landon Jackson fans, there's no doubt. Coach, I've got to say this, and you know as a football coach you can appreciate this. So you would say he would be a football speed 4'6 guy at 260, 6'6? Six, six? Football speed guy? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, for, for dang sure. Well, football speed, when the pads are on, Landon doesn't lose a step. If anything, you know, people that slow down, you're, you're going to see a guy who plays with relentless pursuit. But he's probably a high four six kid, mid four six kid. Um, that 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 just. I mean, on kickoff team, when he was a sophomore, we had two D one kids, and he's the first one down there on kickoff team. Mm -hmm. So he's. A, we have a kid starting at Texas Tech right now, the outside linebacker, and they'd be the they'd be neck and neck to be the first two guys down there. Um, and Landon was three years younger than him. Um, so, yeah, he's got the speed, he's got the heart, he's got the measurables, and I think when all that comes together, you've got the, the formula for a really productive and good football player who wants to learn and become better each day. He's hungry to do it. Coach, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me the other day. We had a long talk, and then be on the show today it means a lot to me. I'm glad that we were able to bring Texas into our state and educate people about your school and, and in Landon and all your players. I uh, really enjoyed talking to you, Coach Gibson, Josh Gibson. And, uh, again, I just wish you all the best and hope you all can win another title this coming season. Yeah, I said it. we're thankful that you're coming to high school sport and crossing over to both states. We know there's great kids and great programs, great schools everywhere, and uh, we're thankful for your coverage. All right, Coach Gibson, look, ha enjoy your day and uh, look forward to talking to you in the future. And we're very fired up to see Landon uh, in purple and gold at LSU. Uh, thanks, Coach. Thank you for having us. Thank you. That was Coach Josh Gibson, head coach, Pleasant Grove High School in Texarkana, Texas. Coach, don't go anywhere. Don't hang up yet. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report with Libra King. Hello, Sports Scouting Report fans. Like what you hear? Well, you're going to love our content at LAFootballMagazine.com. This week, check out Recruit Spotlight on Landry Walker quarterback Justin Hudson, who has committed to the Tennessee State Tigers this past week. Also, make sure to check out our podcast and pre-order your North or South Magazine edition for this upcoming season. All that and more on LAFootballMagazine.com. Hi, everyone. You're listening to Lieber King with the Sports Scouting Report. We have a great guest today, one of the top recruits in Louisiana. 
I think he's one of the top players in the country. Brian Thomas, receiver from Walker High School. If you don't know where Walker High School is, it's right outside of Baton Rouge in Livingston Parish. And uh, a young, bright man, a great student athlete, 3.0 GPA. And uh, welcome to the show, Brian Thomas. Brian, thanks for joining us. Hey, and thank you. Uh, Brian, what is it like being one of the top receiver recruits in the in the United States and being one of the the top ten, I think, in, in the United States? And there's three of them in Louisiana, and, and maybe all three have a chance to play for the same team. Have you looked at that? I know you're still up in the air between LSU and Alabama. And uh, didn't LSU offer you your first scholarship back in 18? Yes, sir. Who, 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 what coach offered you? But was it Orgeron personally? Yes, sir. Well, he uh, contacted my football coach, which was Coach Ricard at the time. And then Coach Ricard told me. Um, what do you like most about LSU? And then we'll talk about Alabama. What, what is the, you know, being, besides being the home school, the, you know, they won a national championship and they had, you know, they got Jamar Chase, as you know, of Jamar Blitnikoff winner and Terrence Marshall coming back. Justin Jefferson going to the Vikings in the first round, and then Alabama having all their first-round picks. But what do you think of uh, of the hometown LSU Tigers? Uh, I mean, they're a great school, and just the uh, number of wide receivers and players in general they're putting in the NFL, and that's uh, everybody's ultimate goal is to get to the NFL. Um, and what about Alabama? What's intriguing you so much? Because I know it's down right between LSU and Alabama. Uh, same thing, really. I mean – just the environment and uh, atmosphere of that school is a great atmosphere to be around. Uh, you caught 60 passes last year for over 1,000 yards, 15 touchdowns. I told you off the air, what impresses me about you, Brian, is that I watched you your first year you started, and you came from the basketball team, and you were a tall guy that could jump out the ceiling, you know. But you became a football player, I think, last year. And what I mean by that, you, you caught all those 50-50 balls in the air. If it's high in the air, you're going to get it. And you came in against Destrehan High School. I was at the game last year, and they had a great receiver, Quincy Brown. And that he was killing your team, man. He was, like, tearing the team up. And you came in at cornerback and shut down Quincy Brown, who's 6'4", 180, your, your height. What was that like coming yeah. in when coach says, come in and shut down the guy? He's, he's, he's hurting us. Uh, when my number was called, I was just just trying to go out there and do the best I could do to help out my team. Um, what do you like most about football now that you're starting to like it as much, probably as basketball? You started in basketball, but what do you? What is it about football now that that you look like you're starting to get comfortable with the, with your full game? Uh, I've always liked football since I was younger. Football's always been my favorite sport. It's just that. I just love I just love football. I, I always loved, loved it. Just being around uh, all my teammates, being around a team and stuff like that. It just it's just a great feeling for me. Brian, you look like you've become stronger. You put on a lot of weight since you've come out. You're pushing 200 pounds now, and I mean you got a high vertical, and then you run. Uh, tell everybody what your true 40 is. I mean, not that it matters in your case because I think you're you got a lot of vertical and you're tall, but. What 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 do you run in the forty consistently? Consistently, I would say I ran a I ran a four four, but on laser, but on hand time, I ran a four three nine. Man, that's that's smoking. Yes, sir. Who's the better basketball player, you or your buddy that signed for basketball, Jalen Cook? Uh, I would have to say Jalen. Who who? Did you ever play one on one growing up, like horse or anything like that growing up? Uh, and say, look, man, let's see who can beat who one on one. Yes, sir. We always played against each other. We always worked out and played against each other since we were like six, seven. We've been around each other for a long time. What do you think of Jalen's future in basketball going to LSU? And um, how how close are you and him? I mean, y'all y'all grew up together, but is he trying to recruit you to LSU too? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say he's trying to recruit me. Because he just helped me do his best for me and go where I feel best. And we've been together since we were like six or seven, so we uh we have a close relationship. And 
I mean, we just stick, been sticking together since then. And I feel like he has a very bright future at LSU. Brian, what is the biggest sales pitch to you between LSU and Alabama? What is something that you want to hear from the coaches or what is something that you want to not hear? I mean, what what is it that, that you think will get you to campus? What What's the main thing for you? Well, I would say at, at, um, my whole top four, I would just say that it's just the opportunity to play, just the opportunity to come in and be able to uh, play if I come in and work hard. Um, Lionel Turner is your, your cousin, and he was a good player at LSU and at Walker. He's a linebacker. Won a national championship with Nick Saban at LSU. Um, and then Chris Hawkins went to LSU, and, and I know you know Chris Hawkins too. Chris went to Walker, was a cornerback. Um, is there a particular player in Baton Rouge that you think gives you your tough games as a DB? Is there a DB that sticks out that you like to go against that challenges you? Um, I wouldn't, I don't have a, I don't have a, like, that one, I don't really know. What about Chris Hilton? Do you know Chris really well from Zachary that's committed to LSU? We've been playing against each other since we were, like, seven, and we just, like, uh, recently started communicating with each other, but that's, that's about it. Yeah, Chris is pretty, pretty fast, too, like you in track, and... Um, are you going to play basketball your senior season, too? Are you going to keep playing basketball? I haven't decided yet. Okay. Um, do you need to visit a campus before you decide, or does that matter at all right now? Um, does that matter? To uh, I would like I would like to, but it, uh, it just depends on how I feel. I mean, I, I would like to, but it doesn't mean I have to. Yeah, the virtual is pretty good for now. <laughs> yeah, sir. Um, so what is the best thing you like about Ed Argeron? What is it something about Ed that you like, talking to Ed? Mm, he's just straight up, straight forward. Uh, just a great coach in general. Um, just always fired up and uh, just keeps his uh, players close to him. And what about, what about Alabama? What, what's the thing about Nick Saban? Same. He's like straightforward, uh, always, always uh, honest about everything and just keeps his players uh, close to him. And your, what about your coach, Mahaffey? What, what is it about Mahaffey that's different with him and the college coaches you deal with? Is he, is he a little different than, than those guys or is he still – he's pretty, pretty hard on you too in a good way, right? Yes, sir. Uh like I, he's almost the same as those coaches, great coach, and he he still has been hard on me. But that's what you uh, want as a player, a coach to be hard on you and uh, push you to be your uh, be best you can be and uh, get to your full potential. Brian, what is the what is the full potential do you think for Walker this year? And you know y'all got talent coming back and y'all got some new guys, but what do you think's the ceiling for the team? And you you think y'all can win championships this year at Walker? Win and try to get the state and win the state championship. There you go. Maybe maybe y'all can get there against a, a Baton Rouge team. Maybe some guys you know and and win a title. It would be Walker's first title, and actually they've never been in the state championship game, so I think that's possible. Um, five yeah, five A's kind of wide open, huh? Zachary's good. Acadiana's good again. Um, and then you know I think those would be the two. Rustin's pretty good this year. Um, but y'all have a tough yes, schedule, man. And look, if there's one thing you think you need to work on, what would that one thing be? Mm, the one thing I would say I need to work on is becoming a better leader vocally, not just out there showing my actions, just becoming a, a better leader vocally. Well, Brian Thomas, we're listening to from Walker High School, one of the top recruits in the country and one of the top, I think, five players in the whole state of Louisiana. It's a great crop of receivers. I know Alabama's got three receivers committed. LSU's got three committed. So, really, it's kind of even right on the amount of re- – they're both going to take four receivers. How do you feel about that? But You know, I mean, because you got to compete no matter where you go, right? Top five programs, right? Yes, sir. Um. I mean, 
whatever wherever you go, I mean, you still got to compete for a spot. So, I mean, it's all just about how you go in and compete. Brian, I want to thank you for being patient because we had some technical problems there for a while trying to get you on. And I want to thank you as a young man. You're a great kid, and you got a great family. And I'm going to go out and watch you again this year. Last year was the Destrahan game, and uh, this year I'm going to try and catch you one of the games this year in person. And But I just wish you the best of luck. You know, obviously we, we'd like to see you stay in Baton Rouge, but that's a decision you have to make in the end, right, on where you want to be the next four to five years. Uh, for college and football and uh, but man look good luck to you uh, don't hang up we're going to be right back you're listening to the sports scouting report with Lieber King parents are you looking for advice on getting your high school athlete recruited by the right college Lieber King is your answer Lee has been doing it for over 30 years he knows the ropes and more importantly he knows the people Lee offers turnkey service from evaluation, creating highlight tapes in the correct format, and complete guidelines for effective communication with the schools. No matter the sport, girl or boy, no matter what grade your child is in, let Lee Brakeen help match your child to the right college fit. Go to our website, lafootballmagazine.com, and get connected today. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scout Report podcast with Lieber Keen. If you want to read more on all of the high school and college teams in the state of Louisiana, go to LAFootballMagazine.com to pre-order your North or South Magazine Preview Edition for the upcoming 2020 season. Also, don't forget to subscribe to wherever you listen to your podcast. We hope you enjoy the show, and we will see you back on Monday. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brakeen.